Hi, this is Brian with Multiversity Comics here with Scott Snyder. Scott, congratulations, first of all, on all the success that Batman and Swamp Thing have, has received in, as part of the new initiative. No, oh, thanks so much, man. I, thanks to all the fans for picking them up. It, like, we were all overwhelmed and stunned by the reception, so it means a lot. You know, if you can introduce anybody to Batman or Swamp Thing and they go back and read Miller or more, it's like I could retire. I feel like, you know, on that alone is making me happy. Yeah. So starting off with Batman, you were writing Dick Grayson as Batman for about a year on Detective Comics. How different is it to write Bruce Wayne as Batman? It's really different. I mean, it, 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 it's fascinating because Dick is so accessible. He's so much like one of us would be if we got to be in the cowl where he's kind of emotionally open. He's empathetic. He's compassionate. He's funny. He's confessional. All of that stuff, like he tells you what he's feeling, whereas Bruce is almost more like an unreliable narrator, I think, in some ways, where he tells you the facts of the case, he tells you sort of what you need to know, but his emotions and stuff are usually kind of guarded. And so you use other characters, almost like Alfred or whoever, to be like, are you sure you're okay, Master Bruce, you know? And stuff like that, or Nightwing. So it's been tremendous fun also because Bruce is so incredibly badass and tough that it, it's a whole another flavor. I really, really love writing Bruce as well. I miss writing Dick, but I, 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 I'm having so much fun writing Bruce that not so much, I guess. Now, uh, in terms of big picture, how do you guys differentiate the Bat books? You know, it, Detective is supposed to be more street level. You know, so knowing that Batman is the Batman book, it's a big flagship book, what type of stories do you hope to tell as the Batman book? Well, the story we're telling really is a big, epic kind of our version of, of Hush or The Long Halloween where it's 11 issues long. It's just a juggernaut of a story where it's something I've been thinking about for a long time where it really is about Bruce Wayne coming back to Gotham after the events of Batman Inc. and feeling very, very confident about his role as Batman in Gotham and feeling like it's the city of the bat, he owns it, it's really something that he, you know, is it the only legend the city needs, the only hero. And then little by little what he realizes is that this organization that everybody at Gotham knows about and legend from this old kind of nursery rhyme, uh, there's more and more evidence that, that this organization called the Court of Owls that has symbol, like the symbol of the owl behind it, might have existed since colonial times and that these men might be sort of influencing events in Gotham and the politics of Gotham. And uh, that we'll have big revelations about like the Wayne family, its history with this organization, about the Graysons, and mostly this organization also has like some really big bad guys that it's going to bring back and bring the weight of history to bear against the Wayne family and the Bat family and try and really crush it. It's almost the feeling we want is almost like Gotham. It sort of turns this big stone eye towards Bruce, and it's almost like I just haven't been paying attention to you this whole time, and now I'm going to crush you. So that's kind of the idea. We're really excited about it. So. We hope it fits the idea of the marquee book, but most of all, it's you have to just write it with the feeling that if you only get the chance to write the character once, write the story that you would write if you only ever got that single chance. So that's the way I feel about this story about Bruce. It's my biggest, best Bruce Wayne story that I could ever do. One of the really interesting themes that has run throughout your Batman work has been Gotham City and Gotham being a character of its own. Do you have a hometown that you relate to in this exceptional way that has influenced your take of Bruce's hometown? Yeah, I grew up here. I grew, I grew up in the city. I grew up on at Waterside on 23rd Street. So in that way, I feel like, you know, I live on Long Island now, but the sense of place is really important and the way the city is sort of a context for all this stuff to happen to you and, and that sense of history because this is sort of a little bit tangential to what we're talking about, but my feeling is basically like, you know, in America, so many of the buildings in the cities are so new and shiny, you know, in, in a way, and it makes you feel, I think, as, as, as a citizen or somebody walking around that everything is made for you, you know? Overseas and stuff, everything is so much older, it's not better, it's at all. I'm, I'm a very, very patriotic in terms of, I'm very sort of, I can be very ugly American about stuff sometimes, but the idea is that just architecturally sometimes there's something very spooky and humbling about walking in a city that's been there so long that you know lots of people have lived and died there before you and New York to me is like that where there's sections of it that are so old you feel the history and so for me Gotham I want to bring that sense of it to my stories where you feel that it has these layers of history and there have been heroes and villains of the past and there have been secrets and there have been sort of things that have happened conflicts that have influenced and actually shaped the characters that you know and love now in ways that are surprising. So yeah. Excellent. Uh, moving on to Swamp Thing. This is an iconic character that has been uh, through so many, I, you know, just amazing stories about the past, especially Alan Moore's stories. Uh, was it in any way a daunting task to be the guy to bring Swamp Thing back to the DCU? Yeah, it's, it's totally daunting. My wife will tell you. I just like freak out all the time. But I mean, my feeling is basically like 
there's also something really inspiring about working with that character. I mean, he's he's one of my favorite characters of all time, and I, I, I nothing would make me happier than when than working on him was the kind of sense I tried to give Vertigo in DC before there was a relaunch, like months and months and months ago, before uh, when Brightest Day was beginning. So um, it wasn't something that I had to like pitch for or that came up, and it was like maybe I'll try Swamp Thing. It was like Swamp Thing is a real passion. So the idea really is just that. Everyone that's taken on the character has done something that's their own with it, you know, from Andy Diggle and Josh Dysart all the way back to Len Wein and Bernie Wrightson and Alan Moore, and they've done something bold and different, you know, so there's something inspiring about that as well, as intimidating as it is, and you feel like you have license to take the character and radically sort of change the direction of the story as long as you're being true to what came before in the history and the rich mythology. So with this story where Alec Holland really is wrestling with this notion of maybe he always knew he was meant to be Swamp Thing, maybe it's in his DNA, maybe he was making the biorestorative formula just to appease the green and get it away from him, and maybe he knows he's part of this much larger war that's coming in some way and doesn't is terrified of that. All of that stuff is very, very different than the kind of direction that the other stories went in, but it builds on that stuff. And once I knew I had that, I felt like I can put on my horse blinders and just be like, work on my story, pretend it's fan fiction, and be okay, you know? As long as you do something that's your own favorite story with the character, I think that's that's the only compass you can follow, really, with this stuff. We just talked with Jeff Lemire a few minutes ago about Dead World, the crossover between the two. Tell us a little bit about that, how that came about, and why you're excited about that. Oh, I'm super excited, mostly because Jeff is like my best friend in comics, and uh, I love his work. It's inspiring to me. I read it to become a better writer, and we trade everything. We trade scripts and outlines, and you know, I, we, we share all of our stuff. So getting to work with your friends is the greatest thrill, honestly. You know, the collaborate, collaborating with your friends is just a dream come true. So on top of that, I'm really excited about it because, you know, I didn't know that we would have a story that was shared, even though we really wanted to have a story that was a, a shared universe and a shared mythology. So we both knew we were going to have a similar enemy. But for us, it really was about this sudden idea that we had where we could create a story space for our characters that would be really linked and it would be on a crossover that you didn't have to read both books. You don't have to pick them both up. It's totally independent, but it's a, a little space carved out for just Swamp Thing and Animal Man where we get to explore the stuff that's happened before and almost sort of stuff that could happen and this all, is, I don't want to say alternate whatever, but stuff that could happen that's really terrifying and exciting and shows different corners of the DCU through that prism. So I couldn't be more thrilled about it. I'm really, really, really excited. Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Scott. Thank you, guys. And thank you, Multiverse. You guys have been so nice to us from the very, very beginning. I really appreciate it, like my very first comic book. So it means a lot to get to talk to you. And thank you guys so much. Thank you. Sure.